What is going on YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to make $200 every single day. If you ain't beefing about the money, then what's the problem? Yo, welcome back everyone. Paul James here, and I'm coming back at you with another video. I'm so excited you're here. If you're excited to learn how to make $200 per day, do me a favor and smash that like button for me right now. Also, if you've never been to the channel before, this is the place where we talk about motivation, entrepreneurship, business, making money, all that type of stuff. So if you're into any of those things and you've never been here before, what I'd like you to do right now is drop below the video, hit the subscribe button, then after you subscribe, if you drop below in the comment section and you comment, I have subscribed, I will actually go back through, I will read your comment, I will reply to it, I will welcome you to the family because I am just so excited that you're here with us today. This is a really unique method, I think you're gonna really enjoy this one today and I'm gonna break it down exactly how you do it because it's something that I'm doing right now and it's something I've paid people to do in the past for me, it's something I've done for other people and it's one of those things that if you can learn this skill, which isn't too hard to learn, you can actually go out there and make money from doing it over and over again. So I don't want to waste any more time. Let's go hop upstairs on a computer and break down how this works. All right, so let's dig into this and how it works. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for people who want membership websites built out. See, a lot of people have content that they're looking to either sell or just deliver to their audience and they have an audience, they have the content, but they don't have the technical know-how or maybe the time to set up a membership area themselves. And there's a lot of people out there that are hiring for this. You can go on Upwork.com. That's probably where I'd recommend going first off and creating a profile there. And you can see that there's tons of people on there who are actually hiring for this. I just went through um, like this one who is paying $200 they did a membership site issues. Another one, a membership-based website, $275. So they've hired multiple times. This is another one right here. Um, budget $300. Um, so they wanted a WordPress membership site. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing. And there's a lot of other you know gigs through here that you can actually go and people are hiring for. So if you can land one of these clients every single day, you're on track to make a really nice income. So I want to break down how this is going to work. So with membership sites, usually what you have is you have the person coming into the site and they land on a dashboard page. I'm just going to put D for dashboard. Now the dashboard page of a membership site is usually going to hold all of the modules is what we call them. From there, when they click on each module, that's going to take them to a separate page. So I want you to think of each box that I'm drawing here, like these bigger boxes, like pages. So this would be the module one page. And there could be a video on this page that has training on it or whatever they want loaded into their membership site. So essentially what we wanna do is if they have three modules, we wanna create three separate pages plus a dashboard page. There's a couple other pages you're gonna need when you build out a membership site. You're gonna need a login page, which usually comes in by default. We'll kind of talk about that. You're gonna need an error page to handle what happens if they're not a member and you want them locked out of the content. That's why membership sites are really cool because if you're charging people for them or whatever, and you don't want people to access the content, if they're not logged in, they're not gonna actually be able to see the content and we can actually set that up. But you're essentially gonna need two components to set up any membership website. You're gonna need a membership plugin, which is going to handle all of the actual like setup of the membership. I'm using a plugin called Wishlist Member. You can see it over here. Now Wishlist is a paid plugin though. So you're gonna have to either pay for that or you're gonna have to have your client pay for that if you wanna use Wishlist. Otherwise, there are free plugins out there that exist and I'm gonna go to plugins, add new, and I'm gonna show you which one that is. So if you go into add plugin and you type in membership, you're gonna find some other plugins out there that exist. I've had experience with this one S2 member, but there's other ones out there that are free. You just have to experiment with them. But again, for the purpose of this video, I'll be using Wishlist. Now the membership plugin usually doesn't control the aesthetics of the site. It's not gonna handle the site design. So you can have a membership set up on your site and it can still be just like a regular design like this. Like it's still just the plain old WordPress. So for this particular video, I'm gonna use a theme that I really like, it's Divi. It's a premium theme by Elegant Themes, but you wouldn't have to use this one if you don't want to. I mean, you can just as well go into the themes library of WordPress and hit add new and you know search for one of these themes that are gonna work. I like Divi because it has a builder built in though, so I can kind of customize things the way I want. And since I'm not a programmer, it makes things really easy. 
I'll leave a link below and you can check that out if you want. One of the other main reasons I'm checking it out is because I noticed that they had this new learning management system layout pack, which includes a bunch of different templates for setting up membership sites. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check that out. By the way, this video isn't sponsored by Divi or Wishlist, but I will have links in the descriptions that are my affiliate links if you wanna pick them up. So I may or may not use these templates, but seeing this kind of sparked the idea of maybe using Divi on this site, and that's why I'm doing that. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start by installing Divi, and we're gonna go to Appearance and Themes. We're gonna hit Add New and we're gonna go and hit upload. I've already downloaded the theme file, so all I need to do is locate it and then hit the install button and activate it. All right guys, so I've got Divi installed. This is what it looks like, pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install our membership plugin. Again, either use a free one. You can use a free theme too if you want. I'm gonna choose to use Wishlist because it's the membership platform that I really like and I feel most comfortable with using for WordPress anyways. So I'm gonna go to plugins, I'm gonna hit add new, I'm gonna hit upload and I'm gonna drag my wish list file in there and we're gonna hit install now on that. We'll go ahead and activate that plugin. All right, so when we visit the wishlist member plugin, it's going to ask us if we want to use the setup wizard. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes on that. Highly recommend using the setup wizard because it basically does all the work for you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a membership level. So let's say for example, you have content that you want certain members to be able to access and other content which costs more, which you want other members to access. So you could create multiple memberships in order to give access to whoever needs it and separate the content based on, you know, whatever it is, if it's a premium tier for one or a basic level, you could do that. So I'm gonna just call this membership level training and I don't need multiple membership levels, so I'm not gonna install multiple membership levels in this tutorial. We'll go ahead and hit next. We're gonna have these error pages. Remember I talked about that. So it's gonna create us an error page if they're not a member. It's gonna create us an error page if they cancel their membership. It's gonna create us an error page if they're not the right membership level. So we're just gonna let Wishlist do its thing and create all these pages for us. Okay, we have the option to automatically protect all posts and pages. So what that means is if you create any new page, you won't have to tell Wishlist to lock it out so that anyone can access it. It'll just do that automatically. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Then if there's a page that I want the public to have access to, then I'll have to just make sure that I turn protection off on that page. If you're thinking like, which route should I go? I guess it really depends on what kind of pages you'll be creating more of. Will you be creating more private pages that you don't want the public to access? If so, you should leave this turned on. Will you be creating more pages that you do want the public to access? If that's the case, then you should leave it turned off. There's also this hide show protection. What that means is like, say they don't have access to a membership level where you have a module, you can actually make it so that they can't even see it. Um, for what I'm doing, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just gonna leave it set to no. Next is the after registration page and the after login page. So you can have Wishlist create these for you. Um, sometimes I don't use all of these things, sometimes I do. We're gonna have them create them for us anyway, and I'll just kinda show you the setup that I'm gonna do as we get into things here. So we'll go ahead and have them create it for us anyways, and we'll just see if we end up using it or not. So we're gonna hit save this setup, and that's it guys, we are set up, we have our membership site. Now, if we go and we visit all pages, you're gonna see that Wishlist automatically created all these pages for us. It created our dashboard, remember we talked about that. It created our error messages, which we had a couple of different ones, whether they had the wrong membership level or whether they just were a public member. So the error page that we talked about here was all set, we we're good to go on that. The login page is also all set up by default when you use WordPress. You can just visit the site. So whatever the site is, site.com forward slash WP hyphen login.php. And that's gonna automatically bring people to the login page. So that's pretty much created as well. You can modify that. We might talk about that in this video, um, but you don't really have to, it's kind of all set up. Other than that guys, what's left is we have to create our pages for our modules. So let's just go and create one module page just to kind of get things going here as kind of a demonstration. So I'm gonna hit add new. I'm gonna call this module one. One thing I like to do is I like to assign a parent page. Think of it like this, since everyone coming to module one is going to be coming to it from our members dashboard, dashboard should really be the parent page of module one. And same for module two. People are only gonna be coming to module two from the dashboard, so that should be the parent page. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna publish that. That page is created. 
and then we'll take a look at it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click view page. So there it is, still looks pretty plain though. We need to actually design it. And that's what I really like about using Divi is that it gives me a lot of control over the layout and how I want things to look. So let's just design what we want these module pages to actually look like. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna click use the Divi Builder. So the Divi Builder has different columns and different rows. So here's the way you should think of these different sections and different columns. This might be a section of our header. Now, if we wanted to create a header that had a search box on the right hand side, a logo in the middle and a menu on the left, we could create a header that had three columns. Now we can easily do this in Divi by coming over into the Divi Builder, clicking insert column, and we can kind of select these preset options that they have. So just kind of think about where you want things to go and you can easily set the page up to basically handle that. Now I actually don't want three columns there, so I'm gonna delete that. Instead, I want one big column. This is gonna be my title. This is gonna be like my headline of what the module is called. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert another row and in the other row, I'm gonna do this one where it says a quarter, a half, a quarter. That's gonna put me a big video player right kind of in the middle there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a module up here. You can see there's all these different modules. There's post titles, there's text. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a regular text widget here and I'm gonna call this module one. Now if I go under the design settings of this, I can actually change what everything is. I'm gonna use this actor font. I can say that I want it to be bold, 30 pixels, I can choose a different color if I want. So look at that, you can see how quickly we transformed the page from what it used to look like, just kind of like this regular blog looking page to something that actually is starting to look somewhat decent. Now I actually thought of something I might do a little bit different. Instead of having this have three columns, I'm gonna take these out and I'm actually gonna do another row, but I'm gonna do it so that it's two thirds on the left and one third on the right. Now what I'm kind of envisioning here is that the two thirds, the bigger size on the left is gonna be for a video and the one third on the right is gonna be like a resources section that people can use for different homework and stuff like that. So I'm gonna throw in another text widget there. I'm gonna call this resources. So let's go back to the Divi Builder. Let's come over to our two thirds side here and let's insert a module and pop in the video module. Now you can use the video module if you wanna upload the actual file. Like right here, you can upload the video. I actually don't recommend doing that. I recommend hosting your video on a different platform like Vimeo or YouTube or something like that. Probably Vimeo is gonna be more secure. And actually what I would do is I would put in a code widget instead. And in the code widget, this is where you can put your embed code from your video. So let's go to one of my YouTube videos here and let's go ahead and click the share button and grab the embed code here and we'll paste it into that code module. All right, so there it is. It's starting to really come together now. We have our module, we have our resources on the side here. This is exactly what I want a membership site to look like when I'm building something out. And you can see just how easy it is to really do that. We could even put stuff underneath there if we wanted to. The sky is really the limit here. So once you have your template the way you like it, you have a couple of different options because you're gonna be reusing this module page over and over again for as many modules as you have. You can either save it to your library, save it as module like that, or you can go download a WordPress plugin that duplicates the pages and do it that way as well. But Divi kind of already has it built in, so you may as well just use that if you're using Divi. If you're not using Divi, then just go to WordPress plugins over here and hit add new and look for a duplicate page plugin, which will basically next to these links where it says edit trash view, it'll say duplicate next to it. It'll add that and it'll just duplicate the page for you. All right, so let's go to our dashboard page. All right, so wishlist has already put some stuff in here for us, like the member's first name and stuff like that, for example. We're gonna go ahead and delete all that because we're gonna be using the Divi Builder on this page. So I'm gonna start off with a column up top, just a regular one that goes all the way across. We'll throw in another text widget here. We're gonna say something like welcome, whatever your course name is called. And we'll go ahead and hit save and exit on that. The other thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add, add another row. And this is kind of where you need to make a decision on how many modules you're gonna have. For example, if you had eight modules, it might make more sense to place four columns and then have four of the modules on top, four of the modules on bottom. I'm gonna just go ahead and select this third, third, third and kind of go with that one. So in each one of these columns are gonna be each one of my modules and it's gonna to link to my modules page. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click insert module. You could do this a couple different ways. You could use a button 
You could use a blurb to do that. Um, let's try the blurb. So I'm gonna call this module one. And then for content, this is just gonna be like a short description of what the student should expect out of week one of the course or module one of the course. Where are we gonna link to? We're gonna link to module one. Again, you can just view the page and then uh, grab the URL that's in the URL bar. Um, I'm gonna open it in the same window. You could choose if you wanna use an icon and let's go ahead and view our dashboard page. All right, I don't really like that arrow pointing like that. So I'm probably gonna kill that icon. Maybe I'll try and find something else. All right, guys, so I wanna show you kind of what I ended up coming up with. So I'm not totally sold on this, but I just kinda of wanted to show you some of the different things you could do. So I went to Pixabay, free uh, images that you can use there with commercial uh, use, which is great. I downloaded one of these images. I came into my blurb that I created. I uploaded that image right here. I uh, put an effect on it, a color blend effect. Then I went over to the design. Obviously I changed the color of the icon to white, changed the text color to white. Uh, there are a couple other important things that I did here though. Um, mostly being that I added padding around my module because what was happening was the icon was touching the top, the text was touching the sides of the module and it just didn't look good. So I added that padding around there, which put some space between the text and the icon and the edges. The other thing I did was I put a six pixel border radius, which added this nice little rounded effect on it to make it look like a nice module. And then I also came down and I put one of these shadows on it, which kind of made it pop out a little bit. You can see how it kind of pops out of the page. I could make this even more drastic if I wanted to. Could try one of these other ones. Um, but that's just kind of the different things that you can actually do. And it's pretty neat. Uh, let's go ahead and save that and take a look at what it looks like with it more drastic now. All right, so that's with it with a little bit more drastic. And I, I kind of like the way that looks. Like I think it looks pretty nice. So now I can easily save this again and duplicate all of this stuff by saving and adding this to my library. Let's just call this module. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that. So now if I wanna insert other modules, it's real easy. I just hit this, I hit add from library, click my module button, and now I can just come into that button and change it to module two, save and exit. I can enter in module three as well. Uh, coming in here, adding from library. You know, it just goes super quick from that point. It's just a matter of changing the title, the description, and the link, of course, going to that page. So that's how you can quickly get that set up. It takes a little bit of time to get the right design, but from there you have your template and you can go and now when we refresh, it's gonna literally be set up the way we want it. There we go, that looks legit. Um, I like it. So now there's some other things that we might wanna change here. We might wanna swap out our logo for whatever our logo is um, and change up the menu. You can do that under the theme options tab, I believe is where it's at. So yep, right here is where we can enter in our logo. I don't have a logo yet for this site though, so I'm just gonna kind of leave that out. The other thing we might wanna change is this footer. Um, we might not want our social links there for a membership site, and uh, we might not want this designed by Elegant Themes or powered by WordPress. We can do that from Appearance, Customize, and this would be under the footers. I'm gonna turn off the show social icons, and I'm gonna edit the footer credits to say, copyright I am Paul James. All right, we can go ahead and publish those changes. You're probably wondering how to get rid of this powered by wishlist. I'll show you that next. So that part is actually controlled under the wishlist member. It's under settings. And I believe it's under miscellaneous here. So it's right here, the show affiliate link and footer. Turning that off will disable that. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and fix the menu up here. So let's go to appearance and menus for that. We'll call this main menu. Hit create, and for now, I'm just gonna drag in the dashboard in module one, since that's all I have created. I wanna make that a drop down. We're gonna save that. We're gonna hit manage locations and make sure that WordPress knows that's our main menu or our primary menu, and save that. So if we refresh, that should be fixed for us. Nice, so there we go, there's our modules, so they'll all show up there. All right, so where do we go from here? We're pretty much at the home stretch here. Obviously, there's some design things that you could tweak, it's just preference. Depends on what your client wants too, of course. There is one major setting I usually like to change. I usually like to go into the wishlist member settings again. And after someone registers, instead of sending them to the thanks for joining page, I like to send them to my dashboard. And same with after login, I like to send them to the dashboard again. I'm also gonna go to the non-members page, which is this uh, 
oops, this content is for members only. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put a login form there because a lot of times what happens is someone will bookmark this dashboard page. And then if the page is protected, they're going to be transferred over to our error page, the this content is members only because they may not be logged in still. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna hit that page. Let me show you what that page looks like. They're gonna hit this page, right? But they're not gonna know what to do. It doesn't say, oh, you need to log in. It just says, please register. And they're like, well, how do I register? I thought I already did that. So we wanna fix that right off the bat. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit edit on this. We're gonna delete what wishlist threw in there by default. And we're instead gonna use the Divi Builder. We're gonna use a single column, put in a text module that says, please log in to view the content. Okay, and we're gonna do another module text one. In this text module though, we're going to hit this wish list short code and we're going to insert the short code login form. We'll center that as well. We're going to save that and we're going to do one more text one. Just in case they can't figure it out, we're going to say, if you're having trouble, please click here to get support. All right, and we can link this to our support desk. And in order to see what it looks like, we're going to have to view it logged out. So I'm just gonna visit an incognito window to view it logged out. All right, so there it is. Please log in to view the content. And it's got our nice login form. And if you're having trouble, please click here to get to support. All right, so now we can go back to wishlist member. We can go back to the settings and we can actually fix the other pages. So non-members are gonna see that for wrong membership level. Since I don't have different membership levels on this site, we're gonna take them, oops, this content is for members only as well. After they log out, we're gonna also take them to that. So whenever they're logged out, we basically want them to see the login form. All right, that's pretty much it guys. I mean, our membership site is done. So now that the membership site is essentially set up and you're ready to give this off to your client, all they need to do now to get people into the site is give them this registration URL right here. So this registration URL is what's going to let people register. So after their customers pay to access the membership, they wanna give them this registration URL. And when you punch that in and go to it, it's going to allow them to come in and enter in their first name, last name, email, all that stuff. You can customize this page as well. Um, I left the sidebar on there. I could easily go and delete that by coming to appearance and widgets and just take that out of there. Um, that would be this section right here. I just go through and delete all those. But that's pretty much what you're gonna to give to the client so that they can get their members inside after they pay. Uh, quickly, I'll show you how you would actually manage the protection level on this stuff. So the way you actually do that is going to your specific page. So let's say you wanna protect module one so no one can see it. You hit edit on that. And right down here, you're gonna notice a section that says wishlist member. And you wanna check this box that says, yes, protect this content, make it members only. And then select which membership level you want to have access to it. So if you have multiple membership levels, you can select which ones get access to it. I only have one. And that's it. This stuff, the system specific pages, you can leave all this stuff because we already have this set up as default in our default settings. We just set all that. We don't have to do page specific uh, unless we needed it for something. But that's gonna be it, guys. Um, you're basically set up from that point. You've created your membership site and you've made yourself hopefully two or $300 for doing so. Now, if you do actually decide that you do wanna use Divi, I'm gonna actually give you the exact templates that I just designed in this video so that when you do get a client, you don't have to go through and design all this stuff like I just did. You can just import my template and you'll just have to do a few minor tweaks. So I'm gonna give you the file, it'll be in the description of this video, and you'll go to Divi and you'll come down to Divi Library you can see here my two templates, my module template and my module buttons for the dashboard. Those are what we designed in here together. You'd come to import right up here and then you're gonna come to import on this tab here and you're gonna drag in the JSON file right here. You can see I'm dragging it in. Drag it in or hit the uh, choose file button here and import those layouts. And that'll import them right in there. And then if you wanna use it on a page, you just would come and hit add new. Let's say you wanna create a new module, name your page something, make sure you use the Divi Builder, and then click load layout. And come to your saved layouts, and here's the one that 
I just gave you. Again, it's in the description below. If we publish that page and go to it, you'll see it's gonna look exactly like the page that we just designed in this video together, right? So there it is. No catch, guys, you can have that template that we just designed. If you wanna thank me, just pick up Divi through my affiliate link, which is in the description of this video. But I just wanna make it super easy. So when you go and get a client, you don't really have to even think about this stuff. Just boom, import my templates and you're good to go. So go out there, get yourself an Upwork account and go out there and start applying for these jobs of these people who are hiring people for membership sites. There's jobs that are live up there right now and you can actually go and implement this and practice. Go and set up a fresh WordPress installation. If you don't have hosting, I'll leave a link below in the description as well to set up hosting if you wanna practice this out. That's pretty much it. All right, guys, there it is. That is the method. That's how you make $200 every single day. You just need to land multiple clients, one client per day. Probably even charge more than $200. As I showed you, there's people charging $300. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this method, would you please do me a favor and smash the like button? And also, what really helps out is if you can share the video either on Facebook or Reddit or Twitter or anywhere where people will see it. That really helps me out, guys. We're trying to grow. We're trying to hit 100K subscribers. I think we're gonna do it really soon. I owe it all to you guys. I appreciate that. If you guys wanna use anything that I recommended in the video, you can check it out below. Some of the stuff in the description are affiliate links, and if you do go and check out through the affiliate links, I, of course, will get paid for it, which definitely helps support the channel and make sure that I can keep doing videos for you guys, and I appreciate it. But anyways, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Oh yeah, and one more thing before you go. I'm thinking about potentially starting to do some live streams of some gaming. A lot of people have asked me if I game. I do game. I'm thinking about doing some live streams where I actually game. It would be on certain days of the week. It wouldn't interfere with the typical videos that I make on my channel. Those would still be there, but it would be another chance to interact with you guys. You could come on the stream. You could ask me questions and stuff like that. But hey, if that sounds like something that you would be into, let me know. I'm just kind of curious to see where everyone stands. But I did see some comments come in. I thought it'd be kind of cool. Maybe we'll give it a try. But anyways, guys, that's all for today. We'll see you next time. I am Paul James. Peace out.